All right, everybody, Matt the Grower. Once again, back to talk to you, kind of wrap up this introduction to the iGrow induction light and, and the technology that we're bringing you. Um, what is it going to mean for you as a gardener? Are you going to have to change? Are the changes going to be dramatic? What can you expect? And, and how to position this light appropriately in your garden to maximize the benefits of it? You know, I talk about the 200 watt and the 400 watt induction light, and that's exactly what they are. They're driven at 200 watts, they're driven at 400 watts. This is not a 600 watt fixture, this is not a 1000 watt fixture. But I will tell you this, the quality of light is far superior. Uh, the lumen to watt ratio makes up for a bulk of the difference in wattage. But the way you use this light, or the way you position this light in your garden, is what's really going to be the great equalizer. When we talk about HID lights, we're talking about point source light. And that's why you see a lot of dimpled reflectors out there. Those dimpled reflectors are trying to take into account this point source light and distribute it evenly across the top of your canopy. But mechanically, it can only do so much. It's just basically diffusing it. So those of you guys out there who have subscribed to these monster reflectors, this, this philosophy that the bigger the reflector is, the better, think about it. You still have a 1,000 watt lamp in there. And that 1,000 watt is just being diluted over a greater space. A 1,000 watts is a 1,000 watts is a 1,000 watts. The difference with our light is, is it doesn't require mechanical diffusion to get an even light pattern across the top of the canopy. If you look at the light itself, it's linear. So from edge to edge, you're going to get the same amount of lumen production. There's none of this pyramid effect. There's none of this fringing at the edge of your garden where the outside 20% just doesn't ever seem to get enough light for full harvest and full yield. See, with this light, you're getting 42 inches of light completely underneath it. The same all the way across. So that's one of the benefits. The other benefit is because this light is so cool, as you can see, I'm touching the lamp itself. I mean, you could never do this with an HID. And what that allows you to do is if there's no heat here, then obviously it's going to be safe for your plant. So during bloom, instead of having your 1,000 watt HID 22 to 24 inches above your canopy, you now can bring your induction light down six to eight inches off the top of your canopy without any worry about thermal stress. In fact, the only thing that you might be concerned about is photo stress. This light is so intense that sometimes you may find yourself seeing little white spots that's chlorophyll bleaching. That's because the light is so powerful. But six to eight inches is gonna get you a really strong bloom fruit response. So once again, instead of being 21, 22, 24 inches off the canopy, we're six to eight inches off the canopy. That's gonna give you that 1300 par, the 1350 par, that really intense light that's gonna penetrate deep into the canopy, making sure that all those flower sites become bountiful fruit sites. You know, you've looked at a tomato and you see this bountiful harvest at the top of the tomato plant because that's where all the direct sunlight is hitting. But at the interior, at the lower, the fruit is generally, you know, a little bit smaller. It doesn't ripen as quickly. Well, we try and remedy that. You lower the light, you get the canopy penetration, you get even fruit production. So with the iGrow light, the only thing you're really going to have to change is you're going to take your HVAC equipment down, you're ducting away some of your ventilation fans. You can sell them on Craigslist. Use them to buy another iGrow induction light, you know? I mean, you're not going to need it anymore. So no more ventilation, no more HVAC, except for, you know, you're going to want to move some air around in your room just for fresh air makeup. And when you're blooming, you know, you're not 21 inches off the canopy. Get that thing nice and tight. Get the penetration you want. Get the intensity you want. Get the quality of light that you're looking for. In closing, you know, you've seen the videos. You know I haven't really steered you wrong. I've taught you guys the basics of hydroponics. And I really am staking a lot of my credibility on this light. The guys I work with, you know, we're really concerned about one thing and one thing only. And that's getting the best quality product to the end gardener. And, you know, it's research and development driven. We've listened. We were told that lights were the sector of the market that they needed to be improved. We found an alternative. You need to be a good steward of the environment. You need to look at what your repercussions are for being an indoor grower. You need to understand that you're being an energy glutton. You don't have to be. You know, it's not your fault. You know, up until now, there really wasn't a, an effective alternative. There was other lighting sources out there that claimed to be energy efficient, but they never produced the harvest that you were looking for. Well, now you have an option. And if you actively decide not to choose the path of energy efficiency, well, you're just an energy hoarder. And, and really, that, it's just not the way to be. Anyways, I grow induction light, the only choice for your garden. I really appreciate you stopping by. I know your time is valuable, but I hope it was worth it. 
Once again, Matt the Grower. Peace.